missed her 11 o'clock lecture again. She keeps listening to breakup songs. I swear I've heard someone like you and thinking of you played on repeat for the last couple of days. She hasn't even responded to her friends' texts or phone calls. Every time she sees a gray sweater or a guitar, she starts tearing up. Poor girl, it must be really hard on her. Hey, what's he still doing here? Come on, Brayden, you know these things take time. You can't expect her to just forget about him that easily. But it's been three weeks already. Well, hasn't it been said it takes half as long as a relationship to finally get over someone? I've never heard of that. That has probably never been scientifically proven, and I've heard that 97% of statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> Regardless, you have to admit, it's hopeless. No, it's not. Let's just go talk to her. I don't think she'll want to talk to you. Excuse me, Cora. Go away. Oh, hey, do so. This is ridiculous. Ignoring the situation and me is not the answer. Could I get the lights on, please, and have them stay on this time? That's better. Now, Cora. God, why won't you ever shut up? You're expecting too much. Why would I be? I'm her brain. I know her best. Well, I'm her heart, and I know her just as well. Nope, even more than you. Aww. Look, Cora, I know you're sad about Aaron, but if you think about it, don't you remember how unhappy you were with him? The number of days you spent crying and waiting for him to call you? You know he wasn't even that great to begin with. You don't know what you're talking about. But when you were with him, you wondered to yourself several times whether you should break up with him. I didn't mean it! Yes, you did. May I remind you of how you're sick of his inconsiderate behavior, how he never treated you out to dinner, how you hated the haircut he got every two months because it made his ears stick out. It wasn't that bad! Why can't you just leave me alone? Why are you denying it? You know it's true, and by denying it, you're just making it worse for hey, yourself. Hey, brain, lay off! Oh, how you want to step in? Yes, because you're being way too harsh. What are you talking about? Everything I'm saying is true. Well, obviously, that's not the whole story. You leave it at the most important memories. Are you saying my evidence isn't valid? Did you not hear all the examples I gave? Well, what about the time he bought a soup when she was sick? And then how about the fact that he preferred the company of his PS3 to hers? You're purposely saying anything good about him. You're purposely avoiding saying anything bad about him. No, you. You are. Enough. Enough. Shouting back and forth won't help resolve this issue for Cora, now will it? I feel as shitty as I did when it started, so I'm gonna say no. Let's see, how to best resolve the issue. Oh, I know. How about we make a list of his pros and cons, analyze them objectively, and then give him an overall grade from A to F. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, do you have any suggestions, Brainiac? Oh wait, that's me. And I can't even think of what you'd consider a good idea. Why do you have to talk about this? Look, if we discuss this, you can offer your point of view as well. Maybe. I guess that doesn't sound so bad, actually. Oh, I know. How about a debate? We'll give both our sides, agree or disagree with each other, and come to an ultimate conclusion. All right, sounds good. Hart, you go over here. Wait, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't want to think or feel anything right now. Okay, let's see. How should we decide who goes first? How I toss a coin? Oh. Such a creative and insightful suggestion. Very typical of you. Except we don't have a coin. Fine. Rock, paper, scissors? No. Josh, Josh? No. It's a number? No. Oh, this is taking forever. I'm just gonna start. Hey, fine. I don't care. What am I supposed to be doing anyway? You'll be <laughs> acting as a judge. Listen to both our sides and decide who makes a better argument. I don't like this idea. But you guys won't shut up no matter what I say. Sorry. <laughs> Fantastic. Now that that's all settled, Hart, you may proceed with your argument. All right, then. Let's see right into the beginning. Don't you remember how you made her feel? Remember the first time he, he holds her hand and I skipped a beat? <laughs> <laughs> I did register a palpitation from you at the time. <laughs> that did happen. And then after she failed her first math midterm, he took it upon himself to take her to her favorite restaurant, the little French place on Central Avenue. Even you thought that was a nice gesture. Are you finished? Now that I have the floor, I would like to correct that grievous assumption. That restaurant was actually his favorite, not hers. And yeah, her. I forgot about that. <laughs> Furthermore, despite Aaron's admittedly kind behavior in the beginning, Toward the end of their relationship, he turned petty and took every opportunity he got to criticize Cora and complain about her not being there for him. Here's a list of all the negative things he said to her. Sometimes you can't take a joke. Lighten up. Wow, your friend looks really good in this picture. <laughs> New haircut? I like your old style better. Aww. 
Yeah, I don't think that color looks good on you. Oh. Wait, you want to order dessert again? Oh. <laughs> That's not fair. Cora was never there for when you needed her. She had all these outside commitments, five classes that semester, and she did more and more extracurricular activities, but she always chose over Aaron. You seem to be suggesting that's a bad thing. If Aaron had been a good boyfriend, he would have tried to be more accommodating, but instead he took it as an opportunity to dump her. As a result, I will have to conclude that Aaron was an inconsiderate boyfriend, and we should be glad to see him go instead of mourning him. Well, that's not true. Aaron was a kind and considerate boyfriend, and Cora has every right to be sad about him. Look at what she wrote in a diary. Wait, hold on. It's private. I'm not really comfortable with this. October 17th. <laughs> Today was the best birthday ever. I made plans to get dinner with Aaron, and then he came in, and it turned out that he had free this whole party for me. It isn't my fault I can't speak. Woo! That my body becomes weak. Or that I can hardly move. <laughs> At the very thought of you. Me. <laughs> I can always turn the other cheek. Woo! Could it be those days ago? I could have sworn that I was strong, well, at least stronger than these emotions that are taking over me. Happy birthday, babe. Were you surprised? I can't, I can't believe you did all this. Hey, it's not every day you turn 20. I wanted to do something special for you. You deserve it. Thank you so much. You're amazing. See what a kind and thoughtful boyfriend Aaron was? Look how happy they were together. Yes, but! But that was just one incident, not indicative of the whole. No. It didn't last. No, and whose fault was that? Cora's not putting equal time into the relationship. The next incident, August 12th. I promised Irene I would hang out with her. But then I had forgotten that I made dinner plans with Aaron too. I tried to postpone it with him, but he didn't take it very well. Thanks for bailing me, Cora. Aaron, I'm sorry. It's just that I haven't seen Irene in forever, and this is the only evening she was free. Can't we do it tomorrow or Thursday? I mean, really? Tonight? The one night I wanted to see you, and forget about the fact I'm never gonna find a fucking job. That's the one night she's free? I'm sorry if I have a little trouble believing you. Come on, please don't act like this. I'll make up for this weekend. You know, it's too late, Cora. You made a promise and you broke it. I'm, I'm sorry if I can't be so quick to buy your excuses. Aaron. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Was that how it happened? I, I don't remember Aaron being quite so melodramatic. <laughs> But, irregardless, does that not support my case that they were incompatible? If I might interject, hey. as my final piece of evidence, I'd like to present the scene of the breakup. Wait, that first second. Hold on, that's, I'm not... <laughs> Yo, headshot, bitch! <laughs> Aren't you going to help me study? Can't you see I'm busy? But all you're doing is playing video games. Are you seriously nagging me again? I don't want to deal with this anymore. I want to break up. What? Why? I mean, admit it. You and I are not going to work out. I think it's best if we just end it now. Oh, my jacket. Oh. Whoa. What? <laughs> that is not how it happened at all. <laughs> Give me this. December 2nd. This is what really happened. Oh man, I died again? <laughs> Why aren't you helping me with my homework? Well, I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. I'll help you now. No, it's too late now. I'm just gonna go sleep. Oh. Well, can I help you tomorrow then? No, you always break your promises to me. 
I can't take this anymore. We should break up. What? Cora? Here, you can have this back now. Wait, that's not what happened either. Cora never said that. Well, that's what I felt like. The police depended and Cora stopped trying. She was afraid to so stop treating Aaron like he was important to her. And then I, the relationship fell apart. I, you may be familiar with the term the honeymoon period, the initial stages of a relationship where everything the other person does is endearing and attractive. But it wears off after three or four months, and this is the time a couple needs to determine whether they're actually compatible. Well, they could have worked things out if they actually tried. You're lying to yourself because you don't want to admit what happened. You don't want to admit that you stopped trying to. If you just tried to commit, we had tried our best. Don't you think I thought about this? Don't you think I thought about all the ways they could stay together and still work? Erin, how many kids do you want? Two, a boy and a girl. How about you, Cora? None. I don't want to have any children. Where do you see yourself living in 10 years? Ideally a big city, like New York. That's where all the financial companies are. I don't see myself living here for very long. Cora, I want to stay here, in California. That's where my family is. See? I thought at first that we still might be able to make things work. But in the end, I had to face the fact that it was too much and we couldn't. Things can always change. They're so young. Why do they have to talk about jobs and family so early? Why can't they just have fun? Why did it have to matter so much? You can't ignore the facts just because you don't like them. Even if they seem like small issues at the time, if they're not addressed, they're bound to blow up in the future. All relationships are like this. We could have worked something out. He loved us enough. Maybe he did, but sometimes love isn't enough. He's the only person who ever told you that he loved you. And you never said it back. I July 20th. I hope you remember this, Cora. <laughs> it's getting pretty late. Do you have to go back and study for your mission now? Yeah, but I can hang out.